Alright guys, good to do the 68 Days Real Old Story episode. The, the title is Captain America the First Avenger. The narrator is Dylan North. Now this is the first Marvel Disney Real Long Storybook, Storybook episode I'm doing. Here we go guys. This is the story of how Steve Rogers became Captain America. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Let's begin now. The year was 1943. A devastating war had broken out, endangering the lives of men, women, and children all over the world. America had sent its troops to fight the forces of evil. Steve Rogers, a frail kid from Brooklyn, wanted nothing more than to fight for his country. But time after time, Steve was rejected by the Army, who was not strong enough to be a soldier. What the Army didn't realize was that what Steve lacked in size and strength, he made up for in honor and courage. One day, Steve was talking to his friend Bucky Barnes. There are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. A scientist named Dr. Abraham Erskine overheard Steve. When Bucky walked away, Dr. Erskine approached Steve. He wanted to recruit him to join the Strategic Scientific Reserve as part of a super soldier experiment called Project Rebirth. Dr. Erskine wanted to know why Steve was so determined to fight in the war. Steve shook his head. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Meanwhile, Johann Schmidt and his partner, Dr. Arnim Zola, studied a mysterious relic known as the Tesseract. Schmidt was the head of an evil organization named Hydra. He hoped to harness the Tesseract's power to take control of the world. Zola placed the Tesseract in a machine. He planned to proceed with caution, but Schmidt wanted him to turn the device to full power. I have not come all this way for safety, Doctor. Electricity bolted through the machine's wires, causing the room to glow bright blue. As the blue light faded away and the Tesseract's energy stabilized, Zola took a deep breath. He knew that the relic's power could change the war. But Schmidt had grander plans. He gazed darkly at the Tesseract. Dr. Zola, Back at the Army base, Steve met Agent Peggy Carter and Colonel Chester Phillips. They were both part of the Super Soldier Project under Dr. Erskine. Agent Carter stood tall as she addressed the soldiers. Recruits, attention! Gentlemen, I'm Agent Carter. I supervise all operations for this division. Agent Carter led the recruits through a series of tests. Steve passed all of them. He proved he had more heart than any of the other soldiers, and he was selected to become a super soldier. Agent Carter took Steve to the lab, where Erskine would complete the experiment. A nurse strapped Steve into a large machine and pricked him with a big needle. Steve looked at Dr. Erskine, relieved. That was so bad. Dr. Erskine grinned. Because that shot had only been penicillin. Just then, needles emerged from the machine itself and injected the super soldier serum into Steve's muscles. From across the lab, the machine's creator, Howard Stark, watched. At Dr. Erskine's prompting, Stark closed the machine to saturate Steve with Vita Rays. Steve cracked a nervous smile as he looked through the machine's window. Probably too late to go to the bathroom, right? But there was no time for an answer. The capsule lit up. Steve's transformation began. A few minutes later, Steve emerged from the machine. He had become a super soldier. Agent Carter rushed over to him. How do you feel? Steve stretched his limbs. Oh, Agent Carter blushed. You look so nice. Suddenly, a man disguised as an American scientist pulled out a lighter. When he pressed down on it, it set off a huge explosion inside the lab. The man, Heinz Kruger, had been sent to hurt Dr. Erskine. He drew his weapon and fired at the doctor. Dr. Erskine, gravely wounded, pointed at Steve's heart, reminding him that he must stay who he was. Not a perfect soldier, but a good man. 
Steve knew he needed to catch the man who had hurt Dr. Burson. As Steve and Agent Carter chased Kruger out of the building, the villain set off another bomb inside his parked car. Then he jumped in a getaway car and sped off. Steve tackled Agent Carter, saving her from Kruger's oncoming vehicle. Agent Carter glared at Steve. Steve continued to sprint at full speed, leaving Agent Carter behind. As he followed Kruger, he used a car door to shield himself from the surge of ammunition being directed at him. He finally caught up with Kruger, but the villain got away. For Steve's heroic efforts, U.S. Senator Brandt assigned him his first mission. He would tour the nation in a red, white, and blue costume as a character called Captain America. His job would be to inspire patriotism and help raise funds for the war. Steve stood on stage and shouted words of encouragement to the audience. Not all of us can storm a beach or drive a tank, but there's still a way all of us can fight. But playing Captain America wasn't enough for Steve. He still wanted to fight for his country. Captain America put on performance after performance. One day, Agent Carter pulled him aside. Steve knew she was right. You know, for the longest time I dreamed about Steve with special military gear and helped him fly to Austria. Steve arrived at one of the Hydra fortresses, which was swarming with Hydra soldiers. He hid in the woods until he was able to jump on a truck that would take him inside. Once he was in, Steve snuck up behind a big group of armed soldiers. Fellas, Steve knocked them to the ground and tossed them across the room with his super strength. Steve found the men from the 107th locked in cages. He freed the soldiers and the group formed a plan to attack Hydra together. One of the men asked Steve who he was supposed to be. Steve smiled. Captain America. Captain America ran off and found his friend Bucky strapped to a table. Cap was shocked. I thought you were dead. Bucky was surprised too. I saw you were smaller. Just then, there was an explosion. Steve and Bucky followed the sound to a bridge. On the other side was the villain, Johann Schmidt. Captain America! How exciting! Schmidt smiled smugly at Steve. He knew the super soldier was proud of being Captain America, but he had news for him. No matter what lies asking told you, you see, I was his greatest success. Schmidt pulled the mask from his face and revealed himself to be Red Skull. Red Skull pointed at Cap. You pretend to be a simple soldier, but in reality, you are just afraid to admit that we have left humanity behind. I embrace it proudly. Before Cap could react, Red Skull jumped into an elevator and got away. Back at the military base, Agent Carter and Colonel Phillips had lost all hope that Steve and the 107 soldiers would return. Then, without warning, the regiment marched into the camp with their heads held high. Agent Carter smiled at Cap. Cap smiled back. Didn't call my right. The soldiers began to celebrate. Let's hear it for Captain America! They all clapped and cheered for the super soldier. At the U.S. Army base, Steve helped Colonel Phillips and Agent Carter map out where the remaining Hydra forces were stationed. Together, they developed a plan for Cap and his new team to take down Red Skull, and subsequently, all of Hydra. Howard Stark, inventor and genius, helped Steve design an even stronger uniform and shield. When he presented Steve with some of his shield prototypes, Steve noticed a circular model hidden under the table. Steve picked up the shield and studied it thoughtfully. What about this one? What's it made of? Stark explained that the shield was made of a very rare metal called vibranium. Steve said he would take it and left Stark with some ideas for his new uniform. At the same time, Red Skull was gathering his seemingly infinite forces, all armed with high-tech weapons. He planned to exact revenge for all the damage Captain America had done to his plans to take over the world. Red Skull looked out at his vast army of soldiers. Tomorrow, I 
Tiger will stand master of the world. Our enemy's weapons will be powerless against us. Back at the base, Captain America put on his new uniform. Then, armed with a vibranium shield, he immediately jumped into action. He fired up his motorcycle and headed straight toward Red Skull. But along the way, he found himself surrounded by a gang of Hydra soldiers on motorcycles of their own. He opened the throttle, sped in front of them, pressed the trigger, and released a huge fire blast from the back of his bike, taking down the enemy soldiers. When he entered the Hydra headquarters, Captain America was outnumbered once again. The Hydra soldiers encircled him and took him prisoner, then delivered him directly to Red Skull. Red Skull looked down at Cap. There are limits to what even you can do, Captain. Or did it ask him to tell you otherwise? Cap shook his head. He told me you were insane. Red Skull glared at Cap. What made you so special? Cap shrugged. Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. Red Skull struck Captain America, but Cap's teammates arrived and deflected both the Hydra soldiers and Red Skull, enabling Cap to get away. With Cap out of his reach, Red Skull escaped to his plane to execute his plan. On board the plane were explosives and the coveted Tesseract. Red Skull planned to destroy all the major cities in the United States and use the Tesseract to enslave the world. With the help of Agent Carter and Colonel Phillips, Captain America snuck inside the plane just as it was lifting off. He and Red Skull battled. Then, Red Skull pulled out his gun and pointed it at Captain America. You could have the power of the guns! Swiftly, Cap dodged the laser bullets and threw his shield at the Tesseract, which sent out a radioactive beam that destroyed Red Skull. Captain America had defeated the villain, but he was left with a plane full of explosives. He needed to contact the military. Cap reached for the radio. The radio crackled to life. On the other end was Agent Carter. Are you all right? Steve took a deep breath. Tristan, it's not going to be a safe landing. We're going to try and force it down. It's heading for New York. Steve, what are landed the plane over water and saved millions of lives. He was a brave hero. He was Captain America. And that's going to wrap up the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to share, subscribe, comment, and click the post notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time for another cool video. This video is now adjourned.